you consider to be your biggest professional triumph, Dallas? And it could be personal as well. Uh, you know, I, uh, that's a tough question. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I, I've done a lot of cool stuff. So I've been on Chopped, which yeah. is great, you know, yeah, I, pretty I, sweet. which is awesome, which and I won. won. I won. Yeah, right, right, right. So that's Minor a pretty, detail. pretty big professional triumph, I think. Um, yeah. I've been to the James Beard house, you know, mm -hmm. in New York and cooked, nice. I think, four or five times now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a pretty big deal. But I think, I think my biggest professional triumph is opening the fat lamb, you know, mm -hmm, I did it, sure. you know, with no investors, it's just me and the wife and, you know, it's all on my back. And yeah. that's the thing, you know, I think that's mm -hmm. having a successful restaurant is kind of like been the biggest thing so that's far great. for my career. No, it was great. It was a great so, night with, good. with my boy and my wife there. Nice. Yeah. So what what is the best piece of advice ever given to you, Dal? I think, I think my grandpa told me this, actually. I think it's work hard and work smart don't just work smart because a lot of people say you got to work you know you got to work smart not hard no you have to work hard and you have to work smart mm -hmm. you know it's a good point that, that takes you a lot farther than just doing it's, one it's <laughs> very true so you know there's a lot of moving parts in the you know i've worked in kitchens and waited tables i'm not a cook i've never done which what you've done but you know there's nights when just nothing works right you know that no matter all well intentioned just <laughs> yeah. something's not the vibe's not there yeah what do you do with a difficult obviously don't name names what do you do with a difficult employee because when everything's jiving and it's going it's great but you know the patrons are getting upset i'm doing an extreme example maybe yeah. you've never had that i would think law numbers you know so you've I've, had it you know? i've had it but you you just push through that night you know mm -hmm. and then after shift you pull that person to the side and and say, hey, let's work on this and this and this. Mm -hmm. This is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want you to know what happened. If in case you didn't realize it, you know. Yeah, then that's another Because sometimes that's the way it happens, yeah. you know. But, I mean, restaurants are so fast-paced a lot of times, yeah. and, and everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing usually, mm -hmm. that if those kind of hiccups ha happen, someone steps in and sees it and recuperates. Mm -hmm. You know, and it just kind of fixes all the problems right there. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times you just pull them to the side at the end of the night and have a little chat. And that's that's kind of been my style instead of getting on them right at the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. oh, you can't. I, I, I never really like to go to a restaurant and see someone yelling at someone in the kitchen or yeah. being being hard on, on a staff member table side or anything like that. Because I think that's not what the restaurant's about. You want to be hospitable. You want, you know, hospitality is kind of, mm -hmm. that's the industry, right? Sure. So. But yeah, I think you should pass that along to your staff too. You know, mm -hmm. you should be hospitable to your staff. You know, mm -hmm. they're they're human beings. They go through a lot of stuff. Sure, it's a tough business. <laughs> very tough business. So. Very physically demanding, and, and, and it never closes, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. It's always and mentally, open. you know, because I mean, that's one thing that that I think is a big part of the restaurants nowadays. Like restaurant scene, is being aware of the the mental, you know, and physical exhaustion mm -hmm. it takes mm -hmm. to produce and to serve people and to you know create an experience for someone mm -hmm. um so we kind of you know i that's why my restaurants are closed two days a week back to back well i'm you gonna know? there's another point i was gonna bring up but i want to go so. to this first you know I've, all, I've interviewed probably close to 10 chefs now yeah since the beginning and inception of this program and of all the ones i've met and some of them are no longer with us mm -hmm. you're the the most stress-free one i've ever had contact with and what i mean by that is you don't seem preoccupied. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a level of self-confidence, self-awareness. I just find it very interesting that you're not preoccupied and yet you have three <laughs> different entities that are you know, yeah. very oh, demanding. I'm, I'm totally preoccupied. So the wheels are but turning. Yeah, the wheels are turning. It. Okay. it just, yeah, it never you. shuts off. I, I got mean, you. I think that's part of being a, a businessman and entrepreneur and, you know, a chef. A chef. Mm -hmm. You kind of, you're always thinking about the next menu. You're always thinking about the next event, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it just never turns off, yeah. you know? 